Hello and welcome to this video on rearranging formula. So first off the bat, what actually is a formula? Well, a formula is a mathematical relationship or rule that is expressed using symbols. And some of those symbols can be letters. Some of them could be special mathematical symbols such as pi. Some of them could be numbers. The difference between formula and formulae is one refers to a single formula and formulae is plural. So let's drop up some formulae up on the board that you may or may not recognize. So these are some famous formulae because there's more than one. Um, starting up in the top right corner, E equals MC squared, Einstein's special theory of relativity. Uh, all the way down at the bottom on the left hand side, uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation and one that we probably should recognize, good old Pythagoras theorem. So all of these together are formulae and if I talk about just one of them, I'm talking about a formula. OK, so let's have a look at how we do this one. So I've given you the formula X equals 5R minus T. And two different questions on this one. The first one, I need to make R the subject. And the second one, I need to make T the subject. So first off, let's talk about what the subject actually is. Well, in my formula here, X is the subject because it's currently x equals and then everything else that follows that. And this here is what we call the subject. So we need to end up for question one somewhere where we've got r equals and then the formula. And for question two, we need to end up with t equals and then some formula after it. So all we're going to do to rearrange this one is we're going to use the same rules that we did when we solved equations. So let's start off by writing this out. x equals 5r minus t. Now if this was just a single equation and you needed to work out the value of a particular variable you would do inverse operations and do the same to everything on both sides until you ended up with x equals 3 or a equals 5. We're going to do the same thing here and we don't actually need to know what these letters represent. They are numbers so they follow the same rules and laws that numbers will. So to start off with I'm going to try and make r the subject. So R is currently there. It's trapped by this 5 and it's trapped by a minus T. So all I'm going to do is to both sides, I'm going to try and get rid of this minus T. And I do that by doing the inverse operation and I add T to both sides. Now on the left hand side, that's now going to look like X plus T. And on the right hand side, the minus T and the plus T have cancelled each other out. And that just leaves me with 5R. Now what I need to try and get rid of is the 5 in front of the R. And if you remember back to solving equations, this 5 here is multiplying the R by 5. So the opposite of that is to divide by 5. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And the way I'm going to write this on the left hand side is x plus t over, which means divide, 5. And now if you think about the 5 being gone, it's just R. R is now the subject of this equation. If we have a look at the second one, slightly trickier the second one, again I'm going to start with x equals 5r minus t. But you've always got to be aware and looking out for when whatever it is they've asked you to make the subject is a negative term. And that happens here. My t is negative. Now there is a nice trick that we can do for this one. Rather than try and get everything away from the t and leave the t in place, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to move the t. So I'm going to add t to both sides and just watch what happens. So this becomes x plus t and this just becomes 5r. This step mirrors the first step that we took in the previous equation. But if you look, what's actually happened now is t hasn't disappeared. t has just moved sides and it's actually become positive, which is good for me. What I'm going to do now is I do need to get the x away. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides leaving me with t on its own, now as the subject of the equation, equals 5r minus x. And that's the correct rearrangement that makes t the subject of that equation. Here's another example to have a look at. So on this one, we are first of all going to try and make b the subject. So again, same as before, I'm going to start off with the formula that they've given me, a plus b over c. Now, the c here is dividing a and b. a and b are kind of trapped on the numerator line of this fraction. So to get rid of this, I'm going to need to do the opposite of dividing by c, which is multiplying by c. And I'm going to do that to both sides. When I multiply x by c, 
that's going to give me CX. And when I multiply the right hand side by C, it's going to cancel out with the divide by C, leaving me with just A plus B. Now, some of you might be looking at this and thinking, why is he put the C in front? Remember, what we tend to do in algebra is stick to alphabetical order. So the C would live in front of the X and those two things are being multiplied. The next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to get rid of the A. And to do that, its inverse operation is a subtract. So I'm going to subtract A from both sides, leaving me with CX minus A equals B. And that's that formula rearranged. In the second one, we need to make C the subject. So again, I'm going to start off with X equals A plus B over C. Now to make C the subject, this is a tricky one. It's very similar to how we dealt with the T in the previous example. What I don't like, and I can't really do anything with the A plus B at all at the minute. So I'm going to start off with the same step as before, and I'm going to multiply both sides by C. That's going to give me CX equals a plus B, same as previously. But now my C isn't trapped as the denominator as a fraction. It's not something that's dividing by. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and get rid of the X that's attached to the C. And because those two things are being multiplied together, the inverse operation here is to divide both sides by X. That's going to give me C equals A plus B divided by X. Right, here are three for you to have a go at yourselves. Pause the video here, hit play when you're ready to see what the answer looks like. Okay, so in this first one then we need to make P the subject. So X equals PR minus S. I'm going to add S to both sides, giving me X plus S equals PR. And then I'm going to divide both sides by R, giving me X plus S divided by R equals P. It doesn't matter that the P is on the right hand side. What does matter is the P is on its own, singular and with nothing else around it. So P is now the subject. If we have a look at this one, we're going to try and make B the subject. So if I start with X equals A plus B divided by C, my first step is going to be to multiply both sides by C giving me CX equals A plus B, and then to isolate B and to make that the subject, I'm going to subtract A from both sides. So CX minus A equals B. In the final one, I can see that the Y term, even though it's got a 20 in front of it, is negative, and that's going to cause me a problem. So my first step here is going to be to add 20 Y to both sides. That will make the Y term positive. So when I do that, I'm going to get X squared equals T plus 20Y. And remember, all I've done there is added 20Y to both sides. If I just fill that in so that you can see. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to subtract the T. So X squared minus T equals 20Y. And my final step now to isolate Y is I'm going to divide through by 20. So X squared minus T over 20 equals Y. And Y is now the subject. OK, right. Had a feeling this guy might show up. We need to rearrange this equation to make S the subject. Stick to the rules that we looked at before. Pause the video here. Hit play when you're ready to have a look at it. Good luck. OK, so I need to make S the subject of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by T. And that's going to give me BT equals E A plus S inside the bracket. Let me just add on my arrow so that you can see what I've done there. Let's multiply both sides by T to end up with this. Now, this E is doing something to the A plus S, the whole thing in the bracket. And if you remember how we expand brackets, what the E is actually doing is it's multiplying. So what I'm going to do to try and get rid of this E is I'm going to need to do the inverse of that, which is to divide by E. Now I'm going to do that to both sides. And that's going to give me BT over E equals A plus S. OK, once I've got this one, there's one step left to go. I need to make S the subject, which means I need to get rid of the A. And the inverse operation that will get rid of that is subtracting an A from both sides. Now, I have to be a little bit careful here because the BT over E 
is having A taken away from the entire thing. So what I can't do is I can't put this take away A on the numerator or the denominator line of that fraction. But once I've done that, this thing should be rearranged and S is now the subject. Okay, so just to recap, we rearrange formula using exactly the same methods as solving equations. Always try and make your intended subject positive if it's not already. So in this example, you can see that if I was making R the subject, that's a problem because it's negative and I would need to deal with that. But it's a problem I wouldn't have if I was making T the subject. And remember to be aware of bid mass rules when you're rearranging. So for example, in this one, first thing I would need to do is to deal with the T. And I would do that by multiplying both sides by T. I can't access A and B just yet because they're kind of trapped by this fraction. OK, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this has been useful. There will be a follow up video on rearranging Formula 2 that's intended for higher tier students only. That's it from me. Hope you found this useful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. <laughs>